Right now in Africa, there is something going on that's making the local residents sad but is making scientists excited. The continent is breaking apart with serious flooding to follow. The action will also result in a new ocean forming a rare event. How is the continent breaking apart and where will the new ocean come from? Stay tuned as we bring you how the African continent is breaking apart and how it's going to cause record flooding. Africa is splitting into two parts, which will eventually result in the formation of a new ocean. When complete, the split will separate present-day Somalia and parts of Kenya, Ethiopia, and Tanzania from the rest of the continent. The large cracks stretching several kilometers appeared unexpectedly in southwestern Kenya recently. The tear, which is still growing, is already wreaking havoc as it's caused a section of the Nairobi Narok motorway to collapse. The appearance of the crack was initially linked to tectonic activity along the East African Rift. However, questions quickly arose, including why it formed in this location and whether its appearance is related to the ongoing East African Rift. The crack could, for example, be the result of soft soil erosion in filling an old rift-related fault. The Earth is a constantly changing planet, even if change may be almost imperceptible to us in some ways. Plate tectonics is an excellent example of this, but every now and then, something dramatic occurs, rising new concerns about the African continent splitting into two. The Earth's lithosphere, that is, the crust and upper part of the mantle, is divided into several tectonic plates. These plates are not static, but move at different speeds relative to each other, gliding over a viscous asthenosphere. The mechanism or mechanisms underlying their movement are still unknown, but they are likely to include convection currents within the asthenosphere and forces generated at the plate boundaries. These forces not only move the plates, but they can also cause them to rupture, forming a rift and potentially resulting in the formation of new plate boundaries. The East African Rift System is one example of where this is currently taking place. The East African Rift Valley stretches over 3,000 kilometers from the Gulf of Aden to Zimbabwe, dividing the African Plate into two unequal parts, the Somali and Nubian Plates. A large crack in southwestern Kenya revealed activity along the eastern branch of the Rift Valley, which runs through Ethiopia, Kenya, and Tanzania. When the lithosphere is subjected to horizontal extensional forces, it stretches and thins. It will eventually rupture, resulting in the formation of a rift valley. This process is accompanied by surface manifestations such as volcanism and seismic activity along the rift valley. Rifts are the first stage of continental breakup, and if successful, they can result in the formation of a new ocean basin. The South Atlantic Ocean was formed as a result of the breakup of South America and Africa around 138 million years ago. Have you ever noticed how their coastlines match like a huge giant can use them as puzzle pieces? In fact, around 300 million years ago, Earth had only one massive supercontinent called Pangaea, which was surrounded by a single ocean called Panthalassa. But what other evidence is there that all the continents of the world were once fused together? Well, another telltale sign is the geologic records. Pennsylvania coal deposits are similar in composition to coal deposits from the same time period found in Poland, the United Kingdom, and Germany. This implies that North America and Europe were once a single landmass. And according to scientists, the orientation of magnetic minerals in geologic sediments reveals how Earth's magnetic poles migrated over geologic time and identical plants such as the extinct seed fern Glossopteris have been discovered in the fossil record on now diverse continents, and mountain ranges that now exist on different continents such as the Appalachians in the United States and the Atlas Mountains that span Morocco, Algeria, and Tunisia were all part of these central Pangaea Mountains, which formed as a result of the collision with the supercontinents Gondwana and Laurussia. The term Pangaea is derived from the Greek words pan, which means all, and Gaia, or Earth. The supercontinent evolved gradually over hundreds of millions of years. According to a chapter in the scientific book Ancient Supercontinents in the Paleogeography of Earth, almost all of the continents were in the Southern Hemisphere during the early Phenerozoic Eon 541 million years ago, with Gondwana the largest spanning from the South Pole to the equator. The Panthalassic Ocean dominated the Northern Hemisphere. Another ocean between the Paleocontinents 
Laurentia, Baltica, and Gondwana began to close during the Ordovician period 485 million to 444 million years ago, and then disappeared during the Silurian period 444 million to 419 million years ago, when Baltica and Avalonia collided with Laurentia to form LaRussia. And finally, about 320 million years ago, Gondwana, LaRussia, and intervening terrains collided to form the Pangaea supercontinent. However, Pangaea was not the megalith that most people believe it to be. Pangaea never included all of the continents at the same time. For example, during the Carboniferous 359 million to 299 million years ago, the Paleotethys Ocean to the east of Pangaea remained wide and served as a barrier between the supercontinent and a number of large, independent Asian terrains, including Tarim, North China, South China, and Anemia. During the Permian period 299 million to 251 million years ago, many former Peri Gondwanan terrains drifted off the northeast Gondwana margin, kicking off the opening of the Neo Tethys Ocean. And between 195 million and 170 million years ago, Pangaea broke up in several phases. The breakup began around 195 million years ago in the early Jurassic period, when the central Atlantic Ocean opened, the supercontinent mostly fractured along previous sutures. Gondwana, that is Africa, South America, Antarctica, India, and Australia, split from Laurasia first, that is Eurasia and North America. Then about 150 million years ago, Gondwana disintegrated. India separated from Antarctica and Africa and South America rifted, and North America split from Eurasia around 60 million years ago. And even without the split happening right now in Africa, the current continent configuration is unlikely to be the last. Several supercontinents have formed in Earth's history, only to be split up into new continents. For example, Australia is currently encroaching on Asia, and the eastern portion of Africa is gradually separating from the rest of the continent. According to a study, supercontinents appear to occur every 750 million years, based on the emergence of other supercontinents during the Precambrian Superion 4.5 billion to 541 million years ago. Most scientists believe that the supercontinent cycle is largely driven by circulation dynamics in the mantle, but beyond that, the details become hazy. While the heat formed in the mantle is most likely caused by the radioactive decay of unstable elements, such as uranium, scientists disagree on whether the mantle has many pockets of heat flow or if the entire shell is one big heat conveyor belt. The existence of extensional forces strong enough to break the lithosphere is required for continental rifting. The East African rift is classified as an active rift, with the sources of these stresses being the movement of the underlying mantle. The rise of a large mantle plume beneath this rift is doming the lithosphere upwards, causing it to weaken as a result of the increase in temperature, stretch, and break by faulting. Geophysical data has revealed evidence of the existence of this hotter-than-normal mantle plume, which is commonly referred to as the African superswell. This superplume is not only widely accepted as a source of the pull-apart forces that result in rift valley formation, but it's also been used to explain the anomalously high topography of the southern and east African plateaus. Rifts have a distinct topography with a series of fault-bounded depressions surrounded by higher terrain. From space, a series of aligned rift valleys separated by large bounding faults can be seen in the East African system. Not all of these fractures formed at the same time, but rather in a sequence that began around 30 million years ago in the Afar region of northern Ethiopia and spread southwards towards Zimbabwe at a mean rate of 2.5 to 5 centimeters per year. The East African Rift is unique in that we can see various stages of rifting along its length. To the south, where the rift is still young, extension rates are low and faulting is widespread and volcanoes and earthquakes are rare. However, towards the Afar region, the entire rift valley floor is covered with volcanic rocks. This indicates the lithosphere has thinned almost to the point of complete breakup in this area. When this occurs, the solidification of magma in the space created by the broken up plates will begin to form a new ocean. Seafloor spreading will eventually progress along the entire length of the rift valley over tens of millions of years. 
The ocean will flood in, shrinking the African continent and creating a large island in the Indian Ocean comprised of parts of Ethiopia and Somalia, including the Horn of Africa. Dramatic events such as sudden highway severing faults can heighten the urgency of continental rifting. However, rifting is a very slow process that, most of the time, splits Africa without anyone noticing. Although most rifting is unnoticeable to us, the formation of new faults, fissures and cracks, or renewed movement along old faults as the Nubian and Somali plates continue to move apart can result in earthquakes. However, in East Africa, the majority of the seismicity is spread across a wide zone across the Rift Valley and is of relatively small magnitude. Volcanism running alongside is a further surface manifestation of the ongoing process of continental breakup and the proximity of the hot molten asthenosphere to the surface. GPS instruments have revolutionized this field of research in recent years, allowing scientists to make precise measurements of how the ground moves over time. According to Ken MacDonald, a marine geophysicist and emeritus professor at the University of California, Santa Barbara, scientists can measure rates of movement down to a few millimeters per year with GPS measurements. As we get more GPS measurements, we'll have a much better sense of what's going on. And detailed satellite observations combined with additional field research could also aid scientists in determining what is going on underground in the Afar region. However, if the area is to be used as a living laboratory to study the continental rift, the environment does not make it easy. It has been referred to as Dante's Inferno. The Afar has the hottest inhabited town on the planet's surface. Temperature often reaches 130 degrees Fahrenheit during the day and drops to a balmy 95 degrees at night. And some scientists' field work has focused on a massive 35-mile crack that appeared in the Ethiopian desert in 2005. According to the scientists, the violent split was equivalent to several hundred years of tectonic plate movement in just a few days. What do you think will be the consequence of Africa splitting into two? Let's hear your thoughts in the comments section below.